Am I the a-hole for not wanting to live with a newborn? In May, my 23-male brother Louis, 16-male, shocked us all by telling us that his girlfriend, 16-female, was pregnant. Our parents were far from supportive. After many arguments, my mother made him leave and our father refused to take him in. Since last August, he has lived with me and my housemate, Alex, 23-male. He doesn't pay rent, but will pay me for groceries. In January, the baby was born. My nephew lives primarily with his mother, who Louis sees every day after school and on the weekends he comes to my flat. This was not something Louis ever asked me about. He just turned up with a baby, and it has been a nightmare. He cries all throughout the night, keeping me and Alex up. His mouth rancid and spits. He causes more washing up than we've ever had to do before, and there are no benefits to having him in the house. After a month, I decided that this has to stop. Louis will have to just spend a few nights a week at his girlfriend's house to spend time with his son, but he can't keep bringing him to mine. He was unhappy, but reluctantly agreed. Despite this, this weekend he turned up with a baby. Again. He attempted to smuggle him unnoticed, but his crying alerted us to his presence. Louis told me that his girlfriend had refused to agree with my idea and had forced him to take the baby home with him. When he came back from the baby's mother's on Monday, Alex and I told him, in no uncertain terms, that if he brought the baby here again, he would no longer be welcome. We both work shifts, so sometimes we don't get back until 4 or 5 in the morning, and we need to sleep. At first, Louis refused to respect this and argued, but he has since reluctantly agreed and told his girlfriend that their son is unwelcome here. His girlfriend wasn't happy with us and is taking it out on him. I know that they are young, exhausted, and stressed all the time, so I feel bad for making Louis's life even harder. But his burden quickly became our burden too, and that was not something I nor my housemate agreed to. I feel like if we had had a chance to come to an agreement before the baby actually arrived, maybe this would have been easier. But Louis never spoke to me about it. Am I the a-hole? Added to Ed. We never thought that him living here would be a long-term solution. His girlfriend's father tried to set them up with the flats before the due date, but that fell through. We tried speaking with our mother about charging him rent, but she refused to let him move back in. Now for the top comments. No a-holes here. Your brother is young and I respect him for stepping up, but he does need to understand his child shouldn't be affecting your life. The only a-holes here are your parents who believe it's okay to kick out their minor child. I respect him too. We know of people who were made single parents at 18 because of similar situations. Yeah, I didn't expect my mother to stick to that. I always thought she'd let him back in. You really need to tell your parents that kicking out their minor child with zero support can actually be illegal in some states as child mistreatment, provided you are in the states. I hope you call CPS on your horrible parents. Twad, I think you are in the UK. I think it's still illegal there. Not stay home. The actual a-holes in this situation are your parents. He's their child and their responsibility. And since they didn't teach him to know better than to knock up his girlfriend at 16, the baby's their responsibility too. It would be optimal if you and Alex could talk to him now and work out a solution to this. So Louis can still bring your nephew home sometimes, but not required. I will note that someone needs to help those kids with how to do child care. If the baby smells rancid and if he's crying that much, there may be a medical issue. But if there is, it may or may not be solvable in a way that isn't just he'll grow out of it eventually. Babies should not smell rancid. Babies should smell delightful unless they just pooped and then they should be cleaned and smell great again. They do know babies have to be washed, right? Yeah. Sex education seems to be awful here. My mother knows two girls who had kids at 17, and now my brother has a son at 16. It's likely to be that this house is not baby-friendly. At his girlfriends, they have loads of stuff to care for him. Here, we have nothing, so it's likely not the best environment. I have no idea what they do or don't know, to be honest. I have brought up this smell before, but it gets defensive. Not stay home. Louis and his girlfriend should have considered that termination or adoption would be more practical solutions, not to mention using contraception correctly or getting the morning after pill if there was an issue. I hope he's being decent enough by having Louis live with him. The baby is not his problem. It is especially not his housemate's problem. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for favoring my daughter over my half-sister? 
Hi. So, quick context. My dad remarried when I, 40s female, was in my 20s. I had a daughter, Kaylee, with his wife, who also had two older kids. Around that time, I was setting up my family and had my older daughter, Charlotte, a couple months before Kaylee was born. I was not very involved in his family. We would talk a couple times a year, exchange Christmas cards, but I don't really get close to Kaylee. A couple years ago, my dad passed away and when Kaylee was 16, her mom also got sick and passed. My stepmother's other two kids were still in college, slash young adults when this happened, so I was approached to take care of Kaylee, as I was the most settled in life. Had a house, job, and two kids. Truthfully, it wasn't something I really wanted to do, but she would have otherwise ended up in the system. My husband and I took her in and have always treated her the same as our daughters. She got an allowance, extracurriculars, and tutoring when necessary. The only issue was that we had three bedrooms. Charlotte was uncomfortable sharing with a stranger and chose to bunk with her younger sister, so Kaylee got a room to herself. My girls didn't complain and have always been welcoming to Kaylee. It was always planned that when Kaylee turned 18 slash graduated high school, she would go to her other siblings and perhaps attend college there. However, she asked to stay an extra year with us due to wanting to move in with her boyfriend here and needing to save up. We agreed but decided to fix up our basement into an apartment for Charlotte so she and her sister would finally have their own space. When Kaylee found out about the apartment, she was upset that it had not been offered to her and her boyfriend. We discussed the room situation and I thought it had been settled. However, she recently moved out suddenly, leaving only a note stating that we clearly didn't think of her as being part of the family. I feel pretty horrible, but I'm wondering if I was an a-hole. Not the a-hole. You took in a teenager you didn't want nor had an obligation to. She got her own room in your house, fed, clothed, schooled, and provided for her. When she, on her own, decided she wanted to stay longer, you agreed. Making up a room slash place in the basement is logical if your girls are growing and need some space from each other, and you suddenly have a prolonged house guest who had her own room. Your half-sister seems a little entitled, frankly. She's definitely entitled, but I hope Obi grants her some kind thoughts. Though so Obi was more than good enough to her. Definitely not stay whole and certainly did more than most would have. She was a teenager who lost her family quite suddenly and was shoved into another house where she didn't fit in. I can't imagine how that feels. Not stay home. You are under no obligation to take in a boyfriend. The apartment is not showing favorites. Kaylee needs to take on full responsibility if she wants to play house with her boyfriend. If she was your eldest daughter, I would say the same. No boyfriends in my house. Go ahead and thumbs down Reddit. My house, my rules. No boyfriends in my house. I would like to know when it became a requirement to house someone's boyfriend. Opie took in her half-sister who she didn't have a relationship with. Your children who would have had their own rooms now have to share her. Your family made sacrifices for this girl that you truly didn't have to. Her sense of entitlement is a bit much. She is an adult. I know that I'm going to get downvoted for this, but Opie's allowed to choose her daughters over her half-sister. Although I really don't think that is what is happening in this situation. Kaylee needs the reminder that Opie's her sister, and at one point her guardian. Guardian and mother are not the same thing. Opie provided Kaylee with a home and made her feel like one of the family. However, feeling like one of the family does not mean feeling that your sister should treat you the same as their actual children. Those are different types of love. Not day home. Not day home. Charlotte has shared a room for two plus years with her younger sister to give Kaylee her own space. Kaylee was always planned to move out at slash around 18, so I don't really see how Charlotte getting the downstairs apartment isn't fair. You were nice enough to take a stranger into your home, clothe, house, and feed them until a predetermined time. I'd call you saints instead of being ungrateful. Next story. Am I the a-hole for being angry with my husband and mother-in-law for choosing the name for our daughter? I, 28 female, and my husband, 28 male, are expecting our first child together. Our daughter's due date is approaching, and I'm feeling very nervous and anxious. My husband and I decided on naming our daughter Anne after my grandmother. I spent most of my childhood and teen years with my grandparents. I was extremely close with my grandmother, 
and was devastated when she passed away in 2016 from lung cancer. We live close to my grandfather and visit him on a daily basis, and it means so much to my grandfather that we are naming our daughter Anne. My mother-in-law and I are cordial when we get together. My husband is her only child, and she feels like since I stepped into his life, their relationship changed. He is still very close with her, but he doesn't visit often because of the pregnancy. Mother-in-law invited us over for a small dinner party, and I thought it was going to be a pleasant evening. When we sat down for dinner, my mother-in-law turns to me and says, Your husband and I spoke this past week, and he told me that you were going to be changing her name to be after me. I could feel my anxiety level rising and said, No, we are still planning on keeping her name to be Anne, right? I gave my husband a look and he doesn't say anything. My mother-in-law makes a face and says, Well, it seems like husband is not on board with her name. I finished eating and told husband that we were leaving. We get into the car, and husband tries to apologize. I told him that I was angry with him for not discussing with me, and even more upset with mother-in-law. Mother-in-law sends me a few text messages regarding my behavior that evening, and I hopes I will change my mind. Am I the a-hole for being angry with my husband and mother-in-law for choosing the name for our daughter? Now for the top comments. Not stay home. I don't get why you're acting like they made a definitive choice. Your mother-in-law can say whatever stupid crap she wants. That doesn't mean you have to listen. I'm really disappointed by how your husband is behaving. This exactly. The baby hasn't arrived and the name isn't on the birth certificate. Therefore, Opie and husband can sit down and discuss things. Just because mother-in-law says whatever doesn't mean that's the way it has to be. Not stay home. It is completely unacceptable for your husband and a third party to decide anything about your child without consulting you. If you let this slide, in any way, I bet your mother-in-law will think she can run your life and decide how your child is raised too. Put your foot down as hard as you can. Quit reading this and do it now. This. You need to send a clear message to mother-in-law that you and husband are a couple and will make your own decisions and she cannot overrule you. You don't want this to be the start of many announcements of mother-in-law's changes in the future. Not stay home. Tell the nurses in the delivery room not to let your husband sign a birth certificate. Also, this may be the start of her bulldozing your husband. I suggest r slash just no mother-in-law. Not stay home. You already agreed. Don't sign a birth certificate without the right name on it and make your wishes known to the nurses ahead of time. Definitely going to be doing that. I'm worried that husband will try to tell them a different name while I'm in labor. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for getting offended at my husband's suggestion that I only take two weeks of maternity leave? I, 25 female, am currently 25 weeks pregnant with my husband, 34 male, and I's first child. We have been together for five years, married for almost two. Baby is growing on track. We've already painted the nursery and my mother-in-law is excitedly planning the baby shower. I have a full-time office job while he has been working from home since the first lockdown. We were talking about our parental leaves and we agreed that we wouldn't take it simultaneously. We were good until I said, Do you want to do two weeks first, then I do mine, then you do six weeks after? I just stood silently staring at him for five minutes. I told him I think he's being ignorant and selfish. He said, What? I don't know how long you need to recover. I don't even know why we're still talking about this. He works for an international company where they get three months paid paternity leave. Meanwhile, I work for a small business which only offers six to eight weeks of unpaid maternity leave. He has been anticipating his paternity leave since I got pregnant because he sees it as an opportunity to seriously start looking for another job. He has been with the company for nine years and has been feeling burnt out. Lately, his frustrations have been compounded by his new manager being difficult. I've been very supportive of his goal of finding a job where he can be fulfilled and appreciated as I can sense that he's not happy at his job anymore. He also said that his current company will be considering him for a better position once he gets back from his paternity leave, so that gets him kind of excited. We have a six-figure income combined. I paid a mortgage while he takes care of the other bills. We have money in the bank, stocks, cars paid off. I don't think my maternity leave being unpaid is an issue because my savings could cover the two months that I wouldn't get a paycheck. I didn't talk to him after his remark. 
He went to play video games on his computer while I folded his clothes. I slept on the couch and still have not talked to him at breakfast. He tried talking to me as I was about to leave for work, but I just noped out of the house. I am upset that he doesn't think that I deserve to get some downtime after giving birth to recover and spend time with our kid. I feel like he thinks growing an entire human being inside your body and then having to push that baby out is not a big deal. Maybe because I never complain about anything. I do 90% of the chores around the house, even carrying laundry from our bedroom at the top floor down to the basement to get them washed, then back up the stairs to get them folded and put away. I feel like my in-laws are more concerned about my well-being than he is. My father-in-law even bought us a litter robot, so I won't have to clean after our cats. My family lives a few continents away, so I don't have a huge support system here. Not stay home. Your husband is woefully mistaken about what is possible during a paternity leave. First off, where you live, what you are getting doesn't even qualify for maternity leave. It's what's considered a medically necessary leave to recover from childbirth. Is your husband even aware that he will be providing full-time care while he's off? Because it seems like he thinks this is a free vacation and not a responsibility. Absolutely. Well said. Is he prepared for the commitment a two-week-old baby needs? Yes. They sleep all day, but come sunset? Wow. When do we tell him about the witching hour? There is no way a doctor will medically clear her for six weeks anyway, no matter how committed to baby care he is. I don't understand why he isn't taking his leave concurrently with hers. It is way easier to tag team overnights the first few weeks. We did this so that each of us got an unbroken four plus hour stretch of sleep each. Not stay home. So, you are the one who is going to push the baby through your V, but you only get two weeks to rest? And then is going to take three months of paternity leave and take that time to look for another job? Who is going to look after the baby and take care of the house while you work? It looks for a job and potentially goes on interviews. And why on earth are you folding his freaking clothes while he plays video games? You're going to be a single mother really quick. Not stay home. Does your husband think paternity leave is a vacation time for him? Who is going to be watching slash taking care of your child during this time? He'll be playing video games and looking for jobs online while she does everything.